Bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a sunnatahu ila yumiddin Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and Welcome again to another episode of your Islamic weekly chat show guest of the week coming to you from Sharjah Television I'm your host Ismail Bullock Today we want to talk about modesty What is modesty? When to be modest? When not to be modest? If there is a time to not be modest. So we're going to kind of discuss that and see what is the reality of modesty. Because maybe it's something that somebody thinks he's being modest or in fact he's not being modest or they are not being modest and vice versa. Do that with me is Brother Muhammad Khan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for coming on the show again. So like I said, we want to discuss <coughs> modesty. What is modesty? What is modesty in Islam? And what is in reality modesty and what is not modesty? Because there could be someone who thinks he's being modest, where in fact he's not being modest, or, or she is not being modest. Yes, to begin with, uh, when we see, uh, and we've always discussed this previously also, that you know, Islam is a comprehensive way of life. And when it comes to each and every aspect, whether, say, it is our worldly life, whether it is our family life, whether it's our business, it's our education, let it be anything, Islam has guidelines for us. And Islam informs us about the matters of the unseen and Islam informs us about, you know, the matters of the ghayb, that is uh, what will happen in Barzakh, afterlife and so on and so forth, through revelation. Now, uh, uh, a primary aspect is that we are created by Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator and therefore he knows what is best for us, what is good for us and what is not good for us. And similarly, when it comes to the aspect of modesty, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, through his revelation, through his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, has given us guidelines about what is modesty and what is not. And basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us human beings to live a modest life, whether it's women, whether it's men, everyone must have this modesty in their lives. And if we were to see the definition of modesty, According to Oxford, it's behavior, manner, or appearance intended to avoid being indecent. To avoid indecency, your behavior, manner, or your character basically, to avoid indecency. This is uh, the general uh, definition which we have according to Oxford. Now, in Islam, we have something known as haya. And modesty is basically somewhere near the translation of Haya. Haya has a more broader meaning to, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it, its aspect more than modesty. So modesty, yes, but for us to understand, it's, it's, you know, roughly translated as modesty. But when it comes to Haya, it is the quality of the person. It is the character of the person. It is the behavior. It is the speech. It is the attitude. It is the attire. And it is uh, basically, the thinking and mentality of the person is what we can define uh, based on haya. <clears throat> now, uh, the Prophet Wasallam and the Sahaba, they have shown us, you know, beautiful examples of this haya. And this is what we will sh see in uh, the course of time. However, one of the hadith, which is uh, basically uh, the fundamental hadith in terms of the topic of haya, where the Prophet Sallallahu said, this is narrated by Abu Huraira in Sayyid al-Bukhari, that faith, belief consists of more than 60 branches and haya is a part of faith. Al-haya u shu'batun min al-iman. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned. It is a part of faith to be modest, to have this quality of haya in ourselves. It is basically a part of faith. So if someone uh, practices haya and has uh, you know, a bashful character. He is, you know, sh it's, it's also roughly translated as shy, but shy is not basically uh, the accurate or, and the only translation. But yes, it could mean in one way or the other, shy, bashful, uh, and to be respectable, uh, and so on and so forth. If someone practices these things, when it comes to his modesty, his attires, his behavior, his language, his speech, his actions, then he is basically practicing haya, and this is out of, uh, his iman. He is uh, following it as per, uh, you know, what Islam wants him to do. It's interesting because you find some people, they, when they read this and 
they misunderstand it. So the person, for example, he's a shy person, meaning he doesn't like to speak to people. So he will say, look, I'm just a shy person. The shyness is from Iman. So he's supposed to go to a counter to make an order or he has to renew his passport or something like that. And he has to go in a public place. And he doesn't want to speak to the staff member. He says, no, shyness is... The shyness here it means, in reality, the scholars say, this is the shyness that you are shy to commit the haram. You're shy in front of Allah who's watching you to fall into that which is haram. This is what the reality behind it means. It doesn't mean that you say you're too shy to go to get a job because you don't like to work with people. So it's okay because being shy is from Iman. So it's okay if I don't want to mix with the general public because I'm being shy. This is not what it means. It means the person is shy from Allah in committing that which is forbidden, which obviously relates to modesty because a lot of the haram that can be committed is by being immodest or being immoral or indecent. That's right. And uh, this is what uh, the first point is that, you know, uh, how uh, uh, we are, uh, if we were to translate it as shy, how we are shy from committing the sin and this haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin with. Uh, then going on to the aspects, you know, of our life. The first is that, you know, uh, this haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so if, for example, someone gets an opportunity to commit a sin. He's alone in his room or, he, you know, he gets a million dollar deal, which is from haram, uh, you know, wealth or riba. And he leaves it for the sake of Allah. He is basically, uh, you know, shy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to commit the sin. Yani what will I uh, respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What will my account be and how will I stand in front of Allah? He's basically shy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in committing the sin. And he's practicing this haya and which is a part of iman. So first and foremost, which we must remember that this haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the reason a lot of people yani, who commit uh, uh, you know, sin, sins thinking that you know, uh, Allah is all merciful and Allah, uh, you know, definitely this is uh, an aspect of our deen. Allah is all merciful, but then we don't forget the aspect that Allah is also severe in punishment. And this is the attitude of the believer that you know, he takes both. Allah is all merciful. Therefore, he doesn't lose hope. And Allah is severe in punishment. Therefore, he is fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. And practicing this haya is extremely uh, essential for a human being. And why is that? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, one of the things people have learned from the words of the earliest prophecy is that if you have no shame, then do what you like. And this hadith explains that if a person he does not have shame, he does not have haya, then he may do whatever he likes. And this is what happens. And that's the sad reality we see that because people don't have haya from Allah, people don't have haya from people, and people don't even have that shame uh, in terms of self-respect, they commit whatever they want. And this is, this is what is happening, which we'll see uh, in, in uh, you know, uh, the episode ahead, that people, they commit sins which were unimaginable, and people do certain things which, uh, you know, uh, are blatantly considered to be, uh, you know, shameless. Uh, but because they don't have haya, this aspect of haya. So once we get this right that, you know, we have this haya in ourselves, this character of haya, of being modest in terms of our behavior, speech, attires and character, then inshallah, we will be cautious and we will, you know, go about uh, not committing these sins inshallah. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned, and this is also a hadith to note, Al-Fuhush is not present in anything, but it ruins it. And Al-Haya is not present in anything, but it beautifies it. And this is a hadith in uh, Jamia Tirmidhi, uh, class as Sahih uh, by Dar al -Salam. <clears throat> So Al-Fuhush is basically indecency, immorality. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, if it's present in something, it ruins it. It's basically uh, destruction. Uh, Anything which is done immorally or immodestly, uh, it basically ruins it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, anything which has haya, then it beautifies it. It, it you know, uh, makes it uh, more beautiful. Now, one question here, uh, which we need to reflect is that who decides modesty? You know, because we are living in this modern age, this 21st century. Uh, the question comes and, you know, our viewers would ask that. Who decides this haya and who decides what is modest and what is not? 
because we see so many people arguing, debating, and you have academic articles of this and that, that this is modest, this is not modest, you must uh, you know, not consider this to be immodest, you must consider this to be modest, and so on and so forth. What is basically modesty and who defines modesty? A simple answer to this is that it is our creator who will define modesty for us. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will define because you and I can differ. We human beings can differ amongst ourselves. Something which is modest for uh, you know, people uh, living in one part of the country, it might not be modest for people living in some other part of the country. So who, de who, who decides, who defines? Like in some part of, uh, you know, in some countries, it's, it's permissible to commit some immodest acts and some fahisha such as you know, illegitimate uh, relationships, it's permissible. In some countries, it's not. So uh, how, where is, where is uh, you know, uh, the criterion for us to decide yani, what is right and what is not, what is modest, what is not? The best is we go to the divine source. We go to our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran, the sunnah has defined modesty for us. If we were to define modesty, you know, uh, from our own rational, from our own logic, or, or, or rather our own narrow logical understanding of realities, then basically we will not be doing justice and we will be debating. As we see, you know, a lot of people who don't have faith, they keep debating amongst themselves. This is modest, this is not modest, that is, alhamdulillah, when it comes to uh, the people of faith, Muslims, you know, they know they are uh, guidelines, they know their limits. Yani this is modest because we go to the Quran and Sunnah. This is what the Prophet ﷺ defined as modesty. This is what uh, is immodesty. So, inshallah, uh, one verse of the Quran, uh, the mafum of which is of Surah Ahzab, ayah number 36, is that when a matter has been decided by Allah and His Messenger, then there is no option for the believer to have his own opinion, his own, you know, understanding of that matter. So this is subhanAllah establishing evidence and proof that Allah is Al-Alim and Allah sent the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the haqq, with the truth. Now, someone comes out, you know, in, uh, after 1400 years uh, later and then he puts his own logic, uh, puts his own understanding of things which is very limited uh, which is uh, yani nothing, uh, and then he starts questioning the Quran, the Sunnah, the aspects of modesty. We say this is completely irrational and this is completely illogical because our Creator and divine revelation defines uh, the realities of life for us. If we were to go and define the realities of life for us, we wouldn't be able to do it. Rather, we will end up in uh, a chaotic situation. Plus, I think if you know, like you mentioned. Uh, if we left it up to people, the the benchmark would always change. Or the, we see things like you mentioned now, that were even as we were children, people doing things now that would be unimaginable, even if we came from the West or from a non-Muslim background. Things that people do now, immoral things, indecent things, would be something you couldn't imagine back then. We can't go into details because some of them would be shocking. But some of the things that go on when it comes to indecency it would not even be imaginable, but now it has become accepted, sometimes even encouraged, sometimes even encouraged to be modern, to be, you have to be like this. And obviously now we've come to the time for a break. So join us inshallah after this short break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. Now, before we went to the break, I was just mentioning the fact that there's things that we would have found to be uh, the opposite of modesty and to be very un you know, Im immoral or indecent that, you know, that have now become accepted. And not only accepted, they're encouraging it, encouraging these kind of things, whatever they may be, in media, in movies, in TV shows, in songs, that it's almost become completely normal. So this is like you mentioned, we cannot have our basis of morals upon public opinion because that will change and like you mentioned, wherever you go, some things could be crazy. One, one country may allow a father to marry his daughter, for example. There are countries that ha yeah, allow that. that. Um, many different things. So there has to be the benchmark. And like you mentioned, our benchmark or our guideline for the essential morals that you know, 
humans should go for is the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is uh, rational, this is logical, uh, you know, if we were to argue, uh, this is logical because uh, this, the instances we see that if we leave it to the people, then they will always keep debating and they will always keep arguing and fighting. And we don't want this to happen. Like we want, uh, you know, human beings to practice modesty. We want human beings, uh, you know, to live this modest lifestyle. And if they want actually to do this, it has to be done through the guidance of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We see that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most modest in his speech, in his attire, in his uh, behavior, uh, when it came to dealing with people, uh, when it came to uh, interacting with people, when it came to transactions and so on and so forth. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, had a beautiful character and, uh, you know, it, it requires a, a whole episode, you know, to describe the character of the Prophet ﷺ. But what we see, Allah also mentioned in the Quran that Muhammad ﷺ is on the highest standard of character. Uh, he had the best characters and it came with modesty. He had modesty in him. So no one can come up and say, you know, that no, because I want to be successful, because I want to be, uh, you know, uh, ahead in times and I want to compete and I want to be the best, so on and so forth. Therefore, he has excuse that I'm doing this and this, which is immodest. Or to be successful, I am adopting this way and uh, this has immodesty, but uh, I have to do in current times. No, this is not the case because uh, our deen is complete. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, uh, you know, to remind our, uh, our viewers and ourselves that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealt with so many issues. Like today people think, you know, uh, they are having issues, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually had to deal with so many issues. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was dealing with the disbelievers. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was dealing with the hypocrites. He was dealing with Ahl Kitab. He was uh, dealing with uh, people who were, uh, you know, hating him, trying to kill him. The Prophet was, uh, had to deal with uh, poverty. The Prophet وسلم, you know, had to deal with uh, instances where uh, his beloved didn't accept Islam and they died upon uh, disbelief, his, his own uncle. And so the Prophet وسلم, he was uh, into uh, you know, warfare, he was into running a country, he was into leadership, he was into uh, guiding people, he was into conveying the revelation. And subhanAllah, yani you see, he was successful in all aspects. In all uh, spheres of his life, he was successful. He was a father, he was, uh, you know, a, a leader, a husband. And subhanAllah, when we see his lifestyle, we don't find one instance before revelation or after revelation, any instance of immodesty. Not even with the disbelievers, not even with his enemies. The Prophet Sallallahu never uh, expressed any form of immodesty or any type of fawahish, any type of indecency in his speech, in his behavior, in his actions. And subhanAllah, that's the reason even till date the non-Muslims also praise the Prophet Sallallahu and they write in their books and articles about the high standard of the Prophet Sallallahu yeah, and how he dealt with his enemies, it was in a modest way and it was in a just way because we see once you practice modesty, uh, justice and other good qualities comes with it. Uh, whereas if you are into fawahish, people practice fawahish and evil as per the hadith, then it leads to other evils and other sins as well. And the point to mark is uh, when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, got the message of Islam and the Sahaba, they were in a, a, a stage where they had experienced extreme immodesty. Like back then, uh, you know, people were marrying their stepmothers, people, uh, you know, didn't wear, uh, you know, modest attires in terms of there was prostitution. They, they were, used to walk around the Kaaba naked. Yeah, this is a, a practical example, you know, of uh, immodesty. They had experienced all of these things. The Prophet Sallallahu yeah, this is to mention, you know, when people think now to implement modesty is very difficult because, you know, the fawahish is so widespread. No, the fawahish was at that time also, but the Prophet Sallallahu got the message. He conveyed it in the best of manners and the, qualities, the quality of the Sahaba سَمِعْنَا وَتَعَنَا that when they recognized the truth, they accepted it. And this is what we see throughout their lives. If something was revealed to be known as wrong or haram or immodest, they left it immediately. And one of the examples is uh, about alcohol, that when alcohol was 
uh, permitted and they had it in their houses. The Sahaba, they had it in their houses. When the verses of the Quran were, uh, were revealed, the verses of the Quran was revealed that now alcohol is completely prohibited. So when this reached the Sahaba, the streets of Medina were flowing with alcohol because they threw all the alcohol on the street. And this is how they responded to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now to know that alcohol leads to uh, all types of immodesty. As the Prophet ﷺ described that alcohol is the mother of all evil. He mentioned it's the mother of all evils. So it leads to a lot of immodesty. And we see here the example of the Sahaba, how they left something which you, they were practicing and they were indulging to for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what basically is our primary objective of this episode for ourselves and for others. And once we know a specific act is not modest and it is immodest, we leave it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the evidence is established, we leave it out. And uh, there is no harm in doing that. Uh, and to, uh, uh, just to remind that, you know, alcohol was expensive then also. Like how it's expensive now, it was expensive then. And it was, uh, of course, addicting, but the Sahaba, they left it. Similar is the case uh, uh, in terms of uh, the Ummuhat al Mu'mineen and the Sahabiyat. When the verses of hijab was revealed, they just took whatever they had, the garments, the sheets, uh, and they took, wore it over. And this is their obedience. This is their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah revealed this is modesty for the women and they took the jilbab on without questioning this and that and you know going into the technicalities and what if what not and the logical reasoning and the scientific reasoning and this this is the revelation because they firmly believe that Allah knows best for us and this is how they expressed you know their form of obedience in terms of practicing modesty now if we move ahead uh, linking to the same point uh, as we said that, you know, there are different aspects of modesty. Once we understand that Allah is our creator to define modesty, then we go into these aspects that there is modesty in attire, there is modesty in speech, and there's modesty in behavior. Now, modesty in attire, as we discussed that, uh, there is modesty for men and there's modesty for women. So modesty in terms of attire, there are specific guidelines for men uh, you know, that we cannot just wear anything and we cannot expose anything out there. There are specific guidelines for men uh, in terms of being modest. And this is how the Prophet ﷺ was and this is how the Sahaba were. That, you know, uh, from a navel to the knee, this is something which must be covered. This is aura for men and uh, being dressed in decent clothes, uh, you know, which is not considered to be clothes of uh, immoral people or immodest people or the clothes of, uh, you know, uh, the enemies of Islam or the disbelievers, this is something which is permissible and we must adopt to this modest attire when it comes to uh, the men. When it comes to the women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran uh, in Surah Ahzab and in Surah Nur, ayah, Surah Nur, ayah number 31, that say to the believing men, uh, that say to the believing women that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty and they should take the jilbab, they should cover themselves except from a list of mahrams are given there that these are the men uh, whom the women need not cover in front of but whereas with the strangers with other people she's supposed to cover when she goes out or when there are strange men around she's supposed to cover herself so as scholars they have described that the whole of the woman is aura and she must cover herself up this is an aspect of modesty and now uh, to also explain that you know men and women they are biologically different. Biologically, emotionally, psychologically, Allah has made us different. And therefore, we have this difference. When it comes to the aspect of worshipping Allah and rewards in the sight of Allah and rewards for specific ibadah, it's the same. There's no difference. So if a man, he prays, uh, does hajj, woman does hajj, uh, a woman might get more reward than the man. But however, when it comes to attires, it's different because biologically we are different and this is what is even known today from scientific research you know that uh, men they are scientifically made up in a way where they get attracted towards women whereas it's not vice versa women they don't easily get attracted from looks and so on and so forth what attracts uh, women is basically uh, 
maybe character or maybe wealth or maybe his uh, attitude and so on and so forth. It's true because a lot of people, they say, you know, like, okay, why do women have... So you do get some people ask, why do women have to cover their hair, not men? And, you know, I always like to say to them, uh, apart from the fact, obviously, that this is the command of Allah, but even from the logical or rationale perspective, how many women would, do you hear them say in statements like, oh, that guy's hair is amazing? Of course, generally, there might be a few here and there, but generally speaking, you don't find the woman is extremely attracted to the guy because of his long hair or because of the way his hair is. Whereas the men, there's a very big attraction to the women and their hair. A very big attraction. And it goes like, you know, so many other aspects. So that is reality. You know, this, this attraction is there. This is more attracted. A lot of men look towards the woman's hair and various you know, parts of, the, parts of their body more than the women do. That's right. And we know, it, so this is why, you know, out of the wisdom of Allah knowing who we are, He created us, He knows our natural dispositions and our natural desires and inclinations. So therefore, this is why the woman has more to cover than the man. Because her points of beauty, like you mentioned, biologically, are far more attractive than the points of beauty on, or attractiveness on the man. That's right. And therefore, uh, research studies done in West uh, itself, you know, uh, suggest that there was a study done that which, uh, you know, drew conclusions uh, out of <clears throat> the whole research that, you know, men, they lose their minds while talking to a uh, beautiful woman if, if that uh, modesty is not practiced. And similarly, uh, you know, as rightly you said that, you know, men, they are more, uh, you know, uh, yani, they have a different makeup than uh, the women. So this is something w which uh, doesn't need basically an argument or to debate, uh, which is, you know, basically made an argument out of uh, nowhere, just from the people of desire, you know, who just want to do uh, not anything without limitations. They want to go out and just do whatever they wish following their desires. This is the argument which they come up with, you know, that why women should cover and why uh, men should not cover. I mean, it doesn't make sense rationally and scientifically also. If we were also to give one logic that, you know, uh, if we, in Islam, we consider women to be precious and we respect women, we consider them to be, uh, you know, uh, like uh, precious, uh, how we have precious jewelry, like gold and uh, silver, you, one wouldn't keep gold and silver yani, open for everyone to come and, and snatch and take it away. Uh, similarly, uh, when we say we need to protect there is protection required. So when we protect our wealth or our properties, a simple example, when you go out of our house, we lock the door uh, or we keep our gold and cash in the case and it's safe. We don't say, no, 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 the thief should not come and steal. I will leave everything open. And this is what uh, is logical. No, this is illogical. Rather, we follow that. We cover everything up, we put it in a safe, and this is what similarly we can apply when it comes to hijab. I'll just hold you on that point. Join us, inshallah, after this short break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Just before we into the break, obviously, we, took, we were just ended on the, on the fact that, you know, uh, you were mentioning the fact that the women are precious and you wouldn't just leave your someone wouldn't leave jewelry or gold out there for anyone anyone just to to snatch you know or just to to look at unfortunately i mean let's be realistic uh, and i've had many discussions with you know uh, even with non-muslims or people who don't necessarily uh, support this whole concept of hijab or they've asked about it let's be realistic you know uh, many women are used as a commodity so you see in many uh, advertisements around the world, alhamdulillah, not really with us, but around the world, that when they want to sell a car, they will have a woman immodestly dressed, lying all over the car. In fact, in fact, when they have car shows, they will have women, sometimes in bikinis or something, standing next to the car. What message is this giving? It's, it's giving the, the men that just like this sports car is something just for your pleasure. It's a toy. It's a boy's toy. 
so is the woman. She's just like a sports car. She's a piece of material. She's a material thing for you to play around and have fun with. This is what it's saying in reality, whether they like it or not. So they want to sell an ice cream that have a woman, you know, in a certain way. So they are make their. It's almost like they are just. They are, you know they are using the woman as a commodity and not respecting her for an intellectual, uh, equal human being. And they're just, you know, they're exploiting the females. Whereas the hijab is saying the opposite. So you're judging this woman not based upon her body size or what it, how, how attractive she is. She's being judged based upon the fact that she's a woman. You cannot see her, so therefore you're judging her based upon the way she is, the way she carries herself, her intellect, rather than looking at her or judging her based upon her body shape or her, how attractive she is. That's right. And because of this exploitation, uh, we find a lot of uh, you know, celebrities, they, they quit the industry because of this exploitation, which you mentioned, I need to make them like a commodity or like a product out there. Uh, a lot of, we, we wouldn't name them, of course, but uh, we can check it out ourselves that so many celebrities, they have left, female celebrities, they have left the industries, this, uh, you know, film industries, just because of the exploitation, because of the, you know, depression and because of uh, the anxiety they were going through, being used as commodities. Not yeah. only that, unfortunately, you know, like you said, we hear so many stories in the news, so many, of famous producers who basically, a lot of the women, to allow them, even though they had the skills of acting and they were very good actresses, they didn't need, but just to abuse their authority, and because they were women, they used their authority to abuse those women, to do indecent things with the women, or to pressure the woman, you want to make it? Let's do this. Let's so do this man. immoral act and then I will make sure your career. And unfortunately, many women felt pressured and they buy this to do these things to get to the career. And so many have come out and said, yes, I was abused by this man. And then you see 15, 20 and you're like, wow, yeah. these women, you know, generally speaking, they're amazing actresses in that sense. We're not you know, promoting movies, but we're talking about they're not, you know, they do have intellect and they do have, uh, you could say, they do know how to act and they could play very powerful moving parts, not just, you know, uh, a simple uh, part where they're just, you know, exposing themselves to right. in the movie. No, they may be playing, they may be dressed, they may be playing a powerful historical character and doing a very good job. And you're surprised that this woman and that woman, that so they, but they were used and, you know, by these industries that promote this immoral and use women as a commodity. And we, we hear these kind of stories, it's very sad. That's right. And again, it goes to the you know, primary uh, problem which we have is about modesty. So if these makers and uh, if these uh, industrialists are you know, these business owners of some fashion industries and so on and so forth, if they had this modesty, then uh, this, if they have this modesty, then this will not be the case because ultimately... Uh, if someone who has modesty, they wouldn't like this, you know, for anyone. And uh, because it's a desensitization which we are going through, uh, it's so widespread that now, subhanAllah, we, we don't even feel it. Uh, may Allah protect us. Because there, were, there was recently, you know, some pictures uh, released uh, of the West, uh, maybe dating to the early 19th century, uh, the, the first images and so on and so forth. And subhanAllah, it showed people, it was a video, I, I believe, it showed people walking on the streets. It was a little modified, you know, made it more clear. And people were walking on the streets and everyone was, uh, you know, uh, dr uh, modestly dressed. But now the span of the past 50 years or so, you know, this has so rapidly taken over our whole globe that, you know, now the fashion industry dictates to the women, okay, you're supposed to wear this and you're supposed to be a commodity of this sort. And then uh, those same people, they go there and then they promote this agenda and then they write and then they m do interviews and so on and so forth, uh, which is sadly, you know, uh, afflicting the weak-hearted uh, people of the society. However, uh, the thing is that we must be modest in our approach uh, in whatever it may be. So for men, it's required to be modest in terms of their attire and clothing. And for women also, it is supposed 
uh, to be modest. Moving ahead, if we see, uh, there is modesty in behavior and speech also. And it is interlinked. And the Prophet ﷺ said, He who believes in Allah in the last day, either he speaks good or he stays silent. So we don't need to speak on everything and anything or whatever we think is right, we speak and immodestly, this is not correct. And the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned uh, about the aspect, uh, you know, which we will touch upon of using bad language. You know, we find sometimes friends, they abuse each other. They even refer to each other by, you know, some bad languages, you know, abusing each other's parents and, you know, being filthy in their language. And they laugh about it and they think it's, it's all okay. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that Haya is from Iman and Iman is in Jannah. And foul language is a part of coarseness and coarseness is in the fire. So foul language, you know, whether it's abusing your employees whether it's abusing the family members or strangers or just, you know, putting the camera and going on social media by using that abusive language, it's not permissible because this can lead one to hellfire. And this is a part of bad character and immodest, immodesty, you know, which uh, a human being is practicing. Similarly, when it comes to the behavior, so a lot of people, they consider, you know, certain things to be, uh, you know, cool and happening some some addictions like smoking and drinking smoking to be specific people think you know as they see on television and they think this is cool whereas uh, according to world health organization and other organizations tobacco kills so many people approximately about six to seven million people are killed due to you know tobacco intake whether it's from cigarettes or other forms of tobacco and this is like a calamity but people, they, you know, consider this. So it is, we say, a part of, you know, being immodest. Like someone smokes and uh, puffs the smoke on others' face or sitting in a meeting, you know, he puffs and his uh, smoke goes on the other. This is immodest. And uh, there is secondhand smoke, SHS, uh, you know, which is uh, also, according to some research, considered to be more dangerous than the person smoking. If someone inhales other smoke, it is more dangerous for him. So we said these are things which are immodest and it is uh, in the first place not permissible in Islam to harm yourself. Secondly, uh, if you look from a broader perspective, it is so immodest for a person, you know. When we think from a rational perspective, no one would like to sit and smoke in front of their parents because they know this is something which is immodest. It's not like they hide and then they smoke here and there. Except some people who have become so, uh, yani, you know, used to it, shameless, and yani they smoke uh, in front of their parents and they are okay with it. May Allah protect us from that. Now, there is modesty when it comes to our behavior, our speech, and looking at things and watching things is also a part of being modest. So now when we mention that uh, it is a part of modesty for women to cover, it is also part of modesty for men to lower their gaze and not lust behind women and not look at them with those glances and gazes, you know, which are uh, evil. As Allah mentioned in the Quran in Surah uh, Nur, ayah number 30, that say to the believing men that they should lower their gaze and they should guard their modesty. So for us men, yani, we should not think, okay, the woman is to cover and I'm set free. No, this is not the case. Man is supposed to be modest in his approach, in his, uh, you know, behavior. He should not keep staring. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that an accidental look is forgiven. So, we you know, maybe while driving or while browsing, something accidentally comes and we look at it. We don't keep on staring at it. We don't, you know, keep on looking at it or we don't go back to it, inshallah. Then it's, it's fine. But then the, the, the moment we start to, you know, look at it with, uh, you know, lustful gaze and again we go back to it, this is the problem and this is considered to be immodest in terms of, you know, our looking at things and our behavior. And it is also to uh, make a note that, you know, imagine there are so many sisters, there's so many women who complain of abuses from uh, men. If men had this modesty in them, like how the Sahaba, they had this in them, the Prophet ﷺ, that they are respectable and they don't look at women. And if a woman passes by, you know, they're respectable, not staring at her. How, f how secure will the woman feel? It's interesting, and not that I'm encouraging anyone to watch it, but there was a, a video that was going around of a, a woman who was walking through a particular well-known country, uh, busy, 
city and literally she wasn't wearing hijab but literally as she's walking past people are saying all kinds of statements to her hey baby hey literally she is being non-stop yeah. harassed hey baby hey this hey that all this non-stop then the same woman later on or the next day she wears a hijab and abaya or jil, jil, jilbab she walks down the same street not one person says a word to her um, so there's, you know, whether it, it, you like it or not, there's a difference. No matter what difference. people, you know, some people may come back and we don't have time because we're, you know, coming to the end of the show. But some people may say, oh, you know, that's the men are weak. The men should change. But this is, you know, unfortunately, the nature of man, whether he actually whistles out to you or not. And whether he says anything, if he doesn't say it to you with his mouth, he's saying it with his eyes. And he's still looking at you with that complete disrespect lustful way so this is why and obviously we've pretty much come to the end but this is why islam those kind of experiments i guess you could say are, an, are a perfect example of the reality and um you know sometimes people need to see those kind of things especially women to maybe to make them realize deep down what men are like unfortunately and like i said if they don't necessarily say it to you they're going to be doing it with their eyes and we, i mean we've pretty much come to the to the end of today's show so jazakallah khair for coming on and again for the viewers we've had a good introduction to modesty what is modesty why we should be modest and what are the guidelines for being modest is it what we see the ever-changing media the ever-changing messages being put out to us no rather it is what is told to be modest in the quran and the sunnah thank you for tuning in inshallah may allah reward you all and until next time by the permission of Allah, same time, same place. We leave you as always with the greetings of Islam, the greetings of peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.